Hi, this is Maria Sanchez, and welcome to the Maria Sanchez Show on KDTV.com. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate your eyes. We're so pleased to have in studio with us the amazingly fine actress, Stephanie Zimbalis. Stephanie is gracing Ventura County with her legs and her amazing talent at the Rubicon Theater in a production of Tea at Five. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I <laughs> can only you. imagine. <laughs> we're, we're having a little bit of some issues, and so there you are. You're thinking, I've worked this long and this hard, and this is where I am today. So <laughs> thank you for that. It's, still, it's great to be here. Uh, you're sweet. Our viewers know that uh, we're a work in progress, and we are about the county, by the county, for the county, and that includes everything from agriculture and politics to the arts. And who could we think of better than the Rubicon Theater? <laughs> and there you are in a production, and I know it's opening imminently tomorrow. Tomorrow. And if right. uh, folks are viewing us after tomorrow, <laughs> that's okay, because they still get to have a conversation with you, and it's running for about a week. Is that correct? No, it's running for four weeks. <gasps> yeah, it's oh, running even better. Till, it's running till September 19th. Oh, excellent. Okay, yeah. good. So I even if they're late to the game with our broadcast, oh, yeah. it, it's still likely yeah. that mm -hmm. you'll, you'll still be on the Rubicon boards. RubiconTheater.org has the schedule. But it's, uh, I think it's eight a week or something we do. Wow. Something like that, yeah. Now, uh -huh. um, you are commuting in between the stage and your home, is that correct? No, I'm not. <laughs> no. Okay, so One of the perks of working at the Rubicon is that Carolyn invites the actors up here. She has to. And so we have a lovely respite in cool Ventura mm -hmm. from where I live in L.A. It's about 107. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's... It's very nice to be up here. It's one of the, one of the perks is walking on the beach and enjoying Ventura. So you get to stay in residence then mm -hmm. while while you're performing. Yeah. Now yeah. this is not your first time with the Rubicon Theater. This is this is actually my tenth. Tenth. Time. This is my tenth time. Yeah. Good for you and yeah. better for us. Yeah. And now um, you, I know that uh, a lot of actors don't like to speak about themselves, and I don't want to necessarily go through your resume, but <laughs> obviously there's a lot of highlights there that we need to. Uh, talk about Remington still being one of them of that's course. That's an old one. That's a very old one, but it's it's one that probably people know me for. What did some lady in the Aqua Park today said, "Oh, you're um Stephanie Isabets?" <laughs> oh, that means my dog is Skeppy Isabets. <laughs> yes. So, she had some vague sense that I had a name with three syllables. Uh -huh. Yeah. But uh, lots of television movies and, you know, mostly uh, the last several years, theater. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of theater because it's important to me to be good at what I do, and there's nothing like theater for making you better. So it's great. Last night we had a, a, an audience that was, the night before was a crazy, wonderful house, just lots of friends and sweet and darling. And last night was appreciative, you could tell at the end, but getting through it was, they were very quiet, they were smiling. So it's difficult because in a one-person show, the audience is the other element. They're, it's, they're really, the play just elevates this particular play when the audience is there because it's almost like having a conversation. So their laughter, their sighs, their stillness, their silence, they're, 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 they're as if you're taught, it's not a monologue, they're, t they're reacting. But when they're not, <laughs> you just sort of, uh, go to your experience and buck up and say, well, I'm going to have a good time. And so you do. Now, it's almost like if um, folks don't know, beef prior to a sitcom being taped or filmed in Hollywood, they have somebody called a warm-up person, and that's where they get them in the mood and they let them know that it's okay to laugh and it's oh. okay to clap and all that. It sounds like perhaps the audiences for T at 5 should know that it's okay. They might have been constraining themselves because in general when you're at the theater, you don't even clear your throat. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. What, because it's pretty clear it's, it's, a, it's a comedy. I mean, mm. there's a lot of humor in it. So I don't know that part. I didn't even know they do that on, I've That's never had a job on a sitcom, uh -huh. so I don't know. But, the, you know, people will say, well, the, the second act is the, is the Hepburn that we know. But honestly, when you go to a play and you go to the theater, and for example, we were talking about Mark Ruffalo. When you see him in, on stage in This Is Our Youth, you don't know who that person is he's playing. It's just you're captivated because he's so good. Or Carolyn Burns did uh, Shirley Valentine mm -hmm. at the Rubicon, and she was sensational. Well, you don't know Shirley. You've never met Shirley before. 
but you're absolutely riveted. So I'm not sure I buy that stuff about, well, we don't know who Hepburn is, and the, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Is, is that person up there interesting to you? Right. And is her plight and what she's talking about of any interest? So I think that's the element. And if, 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 you know, if it's my fault, then it's my fault. But I don't think it is. No. It seems to be a, it seems to be a very popular show. So. Well, and can you give a brief synopsis of the plot? Synopsis? Yeah. <laughs> synopsis. Oh, <laughs> I deserve no, that. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. I have a friend that says, instead of saying different, she says different. Uh, she puts an N in front of the F. It's very hard to do. She's from the Midwest. Uh -huh. Dinfrant. It's very hard to do. Um, basically, the, the, the play, it's a play, deals with two points in Katherine Hepburn's life. One is 1938. She's 31. Uh, she's had many great successes on film. And she's waiting to hear whether she indeed landed the role of Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind while a storm is brewing outside her house. Uh, that's the first act. Second act, she's now, we jump a few years, she's now 96, uh, 76. She's got 20 more years left to live. And it's 1907, help. She was born in 1907, so she's 76. Quick, quick. It's like 82. <laughs> Something like <Yeah>. that, okay. <laughs> anyway, she's, uh, it's Christmas. We've made it Christmas, it's not in the story. It's Valentine's Day in the real, in the play, but we've made it Christmas. And she's just had a little accident, a car accident, and she's telling, she is sharing an afternoon with her. And she's telling you about her life. And um, it's wonderful, it's delicious to play. Each act is short, um, depending on how fast I go and depending on the audience reaction, because they're part of the play too. Mm -hmm. But it's roughly, you're out of there uh, two hours, including intermission. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice afternoon or evening in the theater. So you go from ingenue, basically. Well, <laughs> not quite. The, the, <laughs> in her... They're a grandmother <laughs> at 31. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the character is a young woman in the roundhouse of yes. her success to senior citizen yes and so you have to affect obviously both that's right and that must be a challenge and it's as great. well as right I can it's just see fun. that yeah um, you move differently those muscles you, and yeah you sound differently you look differently mm -hmm. you know I always get a big roar when I say and I've never in all my 31 years seen a more nauseating sight and I always get a big laugh and it's I realize it's because I don't look 31 <laughs> I, think. I, don't think that's <laughs> I don't think that's true but that's so. the beauty of theater is yeah. that you do suspend some kind of reality by you it's a moment in time you know that there's no second take you know that there's yeah. no net under there oh, yeah. much like radio is in that mm -hmm. regard and um, there will never ever be another performance like that. That's right. They're unique. They stand alone. Oh yeah. And I would imagine I uh, have never acted on the theater stage. That it's got to be a rush and it's got to be intimidating. After a while, it isn't. It's not that it's not a rush, but it's it's your job and you feel as comfortable as you know. I I I don't know why. I just I I don't get scared anymore. I haven't gotten scared for years. I. I guess it's because I feel as if I trained for this, I've done it all my life, and let's hope I know how to do it better than the people sitting in the audience mm -hmm. so that I can give them a gift. Mm -hmm. And if you're nervous and you're shaky and you, you know, it gets in the way of being able to do that. So I, I don't, I just figure I'm up here for some reason. And <laughs> I, I've, I hope that they, they have to get their money's worth with me. Well, and that's true too, I think, perceived value. people pay for the experience and then yeah. in general people are looking forward to the beauty of the experience as That's it's going right. to unfold. <laughs> we have Stephanie Zimblis in studio with us. She is starring in Tea at Five at the Rubicon Theater right here in beautiful Ventura County in the city of Ventura. And we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. I'm Maria Sanchez. Thank you for watching KDTV.com. Hi, this is Peter Godinas from KDTV.com. I'm here to announce a new show that we're all excited about here called Meet the Boss. Now this is about all your friends and neighbors who own businesses and being able to support them 
in their causes and helping them stay healthy. So save this program in your favorites. Make sure you spread it out to your friends. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all here in Ventura County. Hi, I'm Audrey Johnson. Be safe, be legal, handsfree805.com. I am so delightful to be here in the studio of KADYTV.com. We're here to share with you and to educate with you what Hands Free 805 is all about. You could send a text, you could read your email, you could make a phone call, just this, your voice. Handsfree805.com is the latest, hottest technology that I've experienced in a long time, especially coming from South America and being here in America with the latest technology. So please give us a call, 805-754-2063. Be safe, be legal. Welcome back to the Maria Sanchez Show right here on KDTV.com. Thank you so much for taking the time to visit with us. And you know, you can always go back to our so shows where they're archived. So if you don't get a chance to watch us in its entirety, then you can click back. And we have in studio Stephanie Zimblist. Stephanie is renowned for all kinds of acting. And now we have the pleasure of visiting with her because she is starring in T at Five. I should say, is the star, <laughs> right? Yeah, there's not. I don't have many co-stars in this one. <laughs> and T at 5 is the latest production with the Rubicon Theater, and they are, of course, located here in Ventura, in Ventura County. And it is, as Stephanie was explaining in the last vignette, if you will, that it is two times in the life of Catherine Hepburn, one when she was 31, mm -hmm. one when she's 76. And do you know anything about why those two moments were chosen in her life to have? to portray in a play? Uh, well, Matthew Lombardo wrote the play based on her autobiography, which is called Me. Mm -hmm. um, and I, that's what he sussed out, I suppose. And it's, uh, he wanted to give, it was written for Kate Mulgrew, I gather. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kate did it originally, uh, and did it all over the country in New York. And uh, it's a turn. It's a great turn for an actor. In fact, I understand just through the grapevine, the local grapevine, that there's actually a production here at a community theater called the Elite Company oh. with um, uh, Latham, Vivian Latham oh. is her name. Um, so it's it's uh, it's done a lot mm -hmm. the play, and I've done it. This is my fourth production. This one. Then we take it down to the Falcon in Toluca Lake slash Burbank in October slash November. <laughs> the same production, en masse, we take everything down. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. And, and we should remind our viewers that you're here for four weeks. Yes, it's with through the, September 19th. Which is uh, lovely. Yeah. Because I hate that when you, the hit and miss, like, oh, darn it, I missed it, I there know. we go. But. It's usually matinees <laughs> on Wednesdays and Saturdays at the Rubicon. Which is also lovely. Yeah. The and matinee and thing. Wednesday is 7. In the evening, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday is 8, and then there's a 2 o'clock matinee on Sunday, I believe. But uh, so there's, there's a lot to choose from. Which yeah. is great, too. And mm -hmm. just as an aside, I've been a huge Katherine Hepburn fan. I studied film starting in high school. Uh -huh. um, the Lion in the Winter was one of my uh, mm -hmm. early ones, and I've always been captivated by her. I named my one and only daughter after her. Oh, did you spell it the same I way? I did, oh, and it is the, <laughs> for her whole life, nothing has ever come out that way. They might get the K right, but yeah. never the A-R-I-N-E. Um, and then Catherine Graham also spelled it that way. Right. Which, uh, and then there's St. Catherine. So there was I, three reasons why I, I did it. I don't think she did spell it that way originally. Catherine Hepburn? No, no, because I've seen, you know, when you read her book and you read and you go and look at things early on, mm -hmm. her name was with an E, I mm -hmm. believe. I think she changed it. Uh, I had a, when I was doing the production that the playwright was producing uh, in St. Paul at the Ordway in 2006, I took the job because I, I'd never done a one-person piece, and I thought, wow, it'll be good for my brain to mm -hmm. see if I can learn it. And uh, 
then I'll know how close I am to Alzheimer's. <laughs> and I learned it, the whole thing in 11 sessions with the high school wow. kid prompting me. I didn't actually look at the script. I, wow. She did it orally. She, and she learned how to read in the process. She was not a good reader. And I'd say, just read me a paragraph. Now read it again. Now read it again. Now let me do it. And then I'd do it. Good grief. And then she'd start with the next one. Sometimes we'd do sentence by sentence, but I'd usually let her do a paragraph. And, you know, she'd stumble over words that she didn't know. She'd mispronounce, and I'd correct her. So she really learned a lot about grammar and the English language and to read, and I learned the play. And it was in 11 sessions at my dining room table, and I learned the thing, because the, the producer wanted me to come to the first rehearsal off book. I've never done that. I was going to say. And so he, that's what he wanted, so that's what I did. Um, Are you always that compliant? Well, yeah. I mean, if they tell you what they want, <laughs> okay. sure, because it's, it's only my butt up uh -huh. there, so I, it's for my benefit, you know. Um, of course, now I forgot completely what I was saying. <laughs> Something the about one the one-person thing weight. in St. Paul, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Lombardo and why he did the piece and uh, why he did that, and I don't know. Well, it's funny because when me came out, I did buy it, and I was disappointed myself. And that goes back to be careful who you're a fan of because you expect you want them to be bigger and larger right. than life. But when she passed away and the quintessential Scott, biography, Scott's book. that mm -hmm. I just devoured within yeah. hours. He told me, you know, he's a, his, uh, we're, we're friends and his brother was a boyfriend of mine. But Scott Berg wrote that one and that he was sanctioned. And was with her for like oh, 20 yeah. years. They were old friends and stuff. And uh, Scott says, that's, mine is the one to read. The reason I haven't, cracked that book yet, sorry, is because the play that I'm doing is based on hers. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing the play, that book actually has a lot more depth and meaning. It also has the voice of her. Right. Because when she was older, and you see the film, there's a way of talking. I mean, she flips everything and everything is like this. Now, you don't do the whole second act like that, but that kind of... Uh, you know, she talks about the worst things in her life, and it's, oh, they're gone, all gone. No, that's the way. And she writes that way, and so you kind of get a sense of who she is in the writing, the mm -hmm. way she puts the words together. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, that's why it's my Bible, and I'll, I'll have time to read the few. Uh, there's about three others that I'd like to read, you know. Well, the other one that I read was written by her trusted housekeeper slash cook slash aide, and it's called like Cooking with Kate, and oh. it would be the recipes that she really liked that oh. she would make for her, and then the story behind it. Uh -huh. So it's kind of a cookbook with a summary along the line. I wonder if that was Nora. I, if that I was think Nora. that's right. I've got it uh -huh. in my library. I'll have to look. Wow. But um, uh -huh. so I, I am ravenous for all things yeah. Kate. Yeah. <laughs> so I I'm looking forward to seeing your production. I'm not. I was. I was when I when I was a kid. My father, when I was about seven, did a movie with Audrey Hepburn. Mm. And so that's when I met Audrey when I was a kid, and uh, she was just a piece of magic. I mean, I... I really? You felt that as well, a young... Well, I went on the set when I was little, tiny thing of um, Wait Until Dark, and this, this human doe came toward me and just bent down and kissed me, and it was like, <gasps> I was just stunned. I mean, she moved like a doe. She really? Moved, oh, yeah. And she was perfect. I mean, she was my idol. So, Catherine Hepburn, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> but I, it's kind of nice because I'm not daunted by her. Yes, exactly. Know? And I finally, in like the third week of learning all this text, I thought, I, I guess I better see one of her movies. I'd never seen one. Really? No. So I still have only have seen like four or five. What did you choose to see the first time? Well, it's Philadelphia Story, of mm. course. Mm -hmm. um, what have I seen? I've seen now uh, Philadelphia. I saw last night for the first time Bringing Up Baby. Mm -hmm. And I can pretty much tell you that that's probably why she didn't get Gone with the Wind, is that movie. Really? Because it was the same year. Yeah. Because the Guess Who's no, Coming to Dinner and I saw Golden that Pond. One. Didn't see that one. Didn't yeah, see Lion and Winter yet. Okay. No, I saw uh, Long Day's Journey. She's spectacular. She's the best Mary Tyrone that there has ever been. She's spectacular in this film. Um, I've seen her, yeah, I've seen her in a few others. Stage Door is delightful. She's great in Stage Door. I don't think she's very good in Summertime. 
But moment. I think what's good of, and what you're sharing, because I know a lot of actors don't want to know too much or have too much get garbage in, if you will, because you want to have your own ability to interpret what it is and how well, you a, see it's it. Well, it's a funny thing. I mean, I, I, my, the way I equate it is if you're looking for a star and they say it's right there and you look and you look, you can't see it. But if you look there, you can clearly see the star. And it's almost the same as acting. You kind of, you, you breathe it in by osmosis. Certain, you have to know yourself mm -hmm. and your own discipline and how to do that. But you kind of breathe it in nearby and everything gets in you. But if you try to do exactly right. the way she, and exactly, it loses a kind of art. It loses this, uh, it loses what we actors do. I couldn't agree with you more. Because you bring yourself to the role. Somewhat, yeah. I mean, yeah. and people say that. Oh, well, it's just Tom Cruise being Tom Cruise. Well, that's what he does. He brings himself Sometimes, to the role yeah, yeah. In, in that regard. So Stephanie Zimblis is our guest. She is the star at <laughs> T at 5. And it is at the Rubicon Theater in Ventura. And we have the contact information for our viewers on the screen. And Stephanie, thank you so thank much. You. And uh, welcome again to thank your 10th. You. That's something to celebrate. <laughs> yes. yeah. 10th production with the Rubicon Theater and Carolyn and Jim and what they've, yes. they've done for the arts here in the county. We're so We have a fabulous director, Jenny Sullivan, and this is about her 30th time at the Rubicon. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking the time. Thank so you. So appreciate it. <laughs> Maria Sanchez here. Thank you for watching KDTV.com.